The long story short is that I've measured my biological age twice on the same tests, both of which said that my biological age based on the DNA methylation test was 16. And I've also measured the do not in pace value, which measures your speed of biological aging based on the DNA methylation values. That score was 0.62, which puts me at one of the slowest speeds of aging in the world. I've already made multiple videos about my routine, my supplementation, my food choices, my diet, etc. You can check them out all in the description. And in this specific video, I'm going to cover my exercise routine and the main principles that I follow when it comes to working out. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at seamland.com and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. First of all, I'll outline the main principles and the main goals of what exercise should do for me, for my goals. Number one is to maintain optimal body weight because being overweight and obese shortens your life expectancy by up to 10 years. Number two is you want to maintain muscle tissue. Having higher muscle tissue is associated with reduced mortality and increased longevity in the elderly people. But the thing that everyone gets wrong about muscle and longevity is that you don't want to become like a bodybuilder. Professional bodybuilders who just have a ton of muscle tissue actually die very prematurely. Of course, if you are not taking steroids, then you're not going to be able to build that much muscle anyway. But regardless, even if you have muscle tissue, you shouldn't become overweight or obese by the BMI standards. So you want to maintain actually like a relatively leaner physique that has muscle tissue and you want to maintain an optimal BMI. Because muscle tissue itself still can have a negative effect on your longevity by wearing down your organs if you just have too much muscle mass. Number three is much more important than just muscle tissue. That's your actual fitness. This includes having good muscle strength relative to your body weight, which is actually associated more with longevity than just muscle tissue. Cardiorespiratory fitness is in a linear fashion associated with increased longevity and reduced mortality. A higher VO2 max predicts your mortality quite accurately and people who have a good VO2 max have up to 30 to 40% lower risk of mortality. And the last and actually one of the most important aspects of exercise is the activation of different longevity pathways inside the body that slow down the process of aging and promote longevity. And because of that, people who exercise, they sleep better, they have lower inflammation at baseline, they have lower blood sugar levels, and they have a stronger immune system, all of which are good for longevity and anti-aging. Winning. Now that this is out of the way, I'll cover the actual types of exercise that I do. So my current resistance training protocol is focused on more powerlifting exercises to improve muscle strength, muscle power, bone density, and those kind of things. I'm not trying to add any more mass. I'm not trying to add any more body weight because for my height and for my BMI, I'm already at like a perfect and at the peak of what is suitable for longevity in terms of body weight. I lift weights usually three times per week for 45 minutes per session. The only exercises I really do are the main compound lifts, bench press, barbell squats, overhead press, barbell rows, deadlifts, and pull-ups. I don't really do any other like accessory movements that much. Every once in a while, I'll do like some calf raises or forearm curls or something like that. But the main emphasis and the main like focus in my training is the main compound lifts. I want to just improve the numbers in those lifts. And because I'm only doing like one to two exercises per workout, then the workouts are relatively short. On average, I'll do around three to six reps per set and three to four sets in total per exercise. Now, how strong you need to get, that also depends on your age and uh, your training status. So uh, you can actually check out this website, strengthlevel.com. So this is the bench press by age. I'm uh, actually 28 years old right now. So my bench press maximum is 140 kilograms. And uh, here it's the advanced range. So I'm above uh, the advanced range for my age at the bench press. For the deadlift, the advanced range is 200. My maximum is uh, like 210. But you don't necessarily need to be in like the advanced range for any of these lifts to be considered healthy. <laughs> for example, like the average person, like if you go to the gym, like every once in a while, like the average person, then even like the novice level is generally okay. You're going to be uh, achieving many of the goals just like that. But I would suggest that the intermediate level is something that you want to aim for if you are like really trying to like, you know, be like a professional recreational athlete, especially with the older you get being in the inter intermediate stage with all these lifts will put you in the, like a better spot than 99% of people. If you're in the advanced range, then you're already like, you know, semi-professional, like you're trying to become professional. Obviously, if you're in the elite, then yes, you're probably like a professional. But if you're in the advanced range, then you're either like have trained for 10 years, like I have, like I've trained for 10 years with uh, all different types of exercises. And uh, you're just being more like, you know, consistent and more focused on like strength based movements, for example, but you can yeah just check out the strengthlevel.com and be in the intermediate range. That's 
like a pretty good range for uh, most people in terms of longevity of how strong they should be. The second important component of my exercise routine and based on the research, which is also one of the most associated things with longevity, it's cardiorespiratory fitness and your VO2 max. There are multiple studies finding that the cardiorespiratory fitness is almost in a linear fashion associated with reduced mortality, meaning that the fitter you are in terms of cardio, then the lower your risk of cardiovascular disease and overall mortality. I know over the past 10 years, there's, you know, everyone has been hating on cardio, like the biohackers say that cardio is a waste of time, don't do cardio, bodybuilders say it's a waste of time, or whatever so but in reality based on the research cardiorespiratory fitness and your vo2 max is actually more associated with longevity and reduced mortality than muscle strength or muscle mass so it doesn't matter if you have a bunch of muscle mass or if you're super strong if your cardio sucks then that's not good for your longevity and that's something that i have changed over the past three years quite a lot so how fit do you need to be with the cardio like the vo2 max uh, score is obviously something that you can't do at home very easily you can go to like a sport lab they do the vo2 max test where you're breathing in with the mask and you're just running for like 10 minutes at an increasing pace until you reach your uh, vo2 max and then it stops and uh, i have done that test as well recently my score was 53.1 which uh, for my age in uh, the 28 uh, it's actually uh, excellent it's not elite again so it's like an like advanced if you use the same metrics as the strength training it's not elite level so but it's still um, above average and uh, excellent in terms of the categories how good should your vo2 max be if you want to really like lower your heart disease risk and you want to improve your blood pressure and even blood sugar levels and all those things then i think you should really try to aim for the excellent range i think it's very well worth it to really hone in on your cardio training and your VO2 max training to reach the excellent threshold which uh, for the uh, 20 to 29 year olds is uh, 51 and uh, 30 to 39 is 48 40 to 49 46 for the 50s it's 43 for the 60 year olds is 39 so if you can get to the excellent range with your VO2 max test then uh, that would be like you know you're really doing you're really kicking ass in terms of that but what kind of cardio I do. Generally, my cardio workout includes two to three zone two steady state cardio sessions per week. Zone two cardio just means that you're able to do the cardio while breathing through your nose. But for the VO2 max, then just the zone two obviously isn't enough. You also need to reach the actual near maximum heart rate, which has to be done, which only can be achieved with uh, interval works and uh, high intensity interval training. So usually I'll do like one to two short interval sessions per week. The duration is actually pretty short with the interval training it's gonna be like 5 to 15 minutes in total uh, like a shorter high intensity interval workout so the way i structure my workouts is gonna be that one day i focus on the strength the other day i'll focus on the cardio the third day i focus on strength and conditioning for example the another day cardio so i cycle between high intensity and lower intensity workout days so there you have it i hope you got some valuable information from how i structure my workouts definitely make sure you check out my other videos about my diet and the food choices and the supplements that i eat but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click like subscribe notification bell as well my name is Seem. stay optimized stay empowered